This is episode 656, and today we're going to be talking about building a blueprint for unstoppable willpower. You know, I can say that if this is the first time or you're returning back, you know, welcome to the journey of sculpting your mental fortitude. That's what you've come here for. That's what you are staying here for. And the key to unlocking your full potential, mental fortitude, mental strength, grit, resilience, all these different terms is to help you unlock your full potential. You know, willpower is the bedrock of success. The force that propels you through challenges and towards your goal. You know, this willpower is what keeps you going. It's the gas in your gas tank. And when you have a full tank of willpower, you can keep going. But when it starts to get empty, you will notice that um, your motivation, your drive, your actions start to wane. So we want to be able to create, you know, a reserve tank of willpower, if you will. And so here are going to go over some ways of developing unstoppable willpower. Now, of course, these aren't all of them. These are some of the ones that I have found helpful in my personal life and have found helpful when I'm coaching my clients. So the first one is set clear and compelling goals. I'm sure you've heard this many times. If you're returning back from this podcast to this podcast, you've heard this. But we have to understand, again, what goals are. Goals are something that you have never, ever achieved in your life. Because it's not necessarily the goal that's important. It's who you become to achieve that goal. And then compelling has to be motivational. You want, this is something that you desire. You know, if you have done 15 reps on a deadlift and you go, oh, I'm going to do 16, it's probably not not that compelling. If you hit your quota and you go, oh, I want to do a dollar over my quota, that's probably not compelling. If you have written five pages to a book you want to write and you go, oh, I'm going to write six, that's probably not that compelling. So you want to make sure, you know, we use the SMART formula or I like also the SMARTER formula, but it's got to be compelling. It's got to be something that you have never, ever, ever achieved before. Because if you have achieved it, you don't need willpower to go it. You just repeat what you've done. But if it's a goal that you've never achieved before, you absolutely need willpower to achieve that. Then you break it down, right? What I like to do with some of my clients is say, okay, where do you want to be a year from now? Where do you want to be nine months from now? Where do you want to be six months from now? Where do you want to be three months? One month, one week, one day. So you break it down. So you have the clear, compelling goal out for a year. And then each of the subsequent ones are milestones. And then you go, where do you want to be tomorrow? Okay, how are you going to get there? And then we develop the action plans, the action steps. But you want to break them down because inch by inch, anything is a cinch. That came from Robert Schuler, which was a great motivational um, pastor down in Orange County. Cultivate positive habits. So I work with a lot of clients on establishing an AM, a PM, a sleep, and a work habit. So the positive habit, your AM routine, your AM habit wants to, and it's the key of it is to energize you, focus you, and set a positive outlook on life. So if you, first thing you do is pick up your smartphone to check email, I don't think that's going to energize you. I don't think that's going to put a positive outlook on life. So what are the things that you can do to energize yourself that that can create that? Maybe it's, you know, what I'd like to say, there's a movement practice, there's a hydration, there's a nutrition. But you want to, in the AM, you want to put yourself around situations, information, people that are going to give you a positive outlook and energize you. And then the PM routine is to kind of create this oasis and then time to reflect and express gratitude. So those are just two of them which can create some really good positive habits. Embrace discomfort. A lot of people don't like discomfort. I've done a lot of podcasts on adversity and challenge and uh other names for discomfort, but when you embrace your discomfort, 
you then you get comfortable with being uncomfortable and when you're comfortable with being uncomfortable you know that you can survive and you know that you'll be okay so then you can start going after those goals that are right outside your complacent zone because if you stop when you're feeling discomfort well not a lot happens you don't get fit that way you don't reach your financial goals you don't reach your relationship goals when things get discomfort that's a sign that hey you're growing when it's a discomfort that's a really good positive sign that we're on the verge of growing so you want to embrace that discomfort visualize success you want to be able to you know in that a.m routine perhaps take a minute meditation and visualize the end of the day and all the things that you wanted to get accomplished if you're in an athletic endeavor or going to the gym visualize what a great workout would look like you're doing a sales presentation visualize what a good sales presentation would look like so you want to be able to visualize those steps right the one one day one week one month all of those you want to be able to visualize what success will look like when you hit those milestones mindfulness mindfulness is part of just paying attention to what is um, i'll bring this back to a positive habit of um, having a healthy good breakfast lunch or dinner most people will either sit at their desk and eat mindlessly. They'll go home on the couch, get a bag of chips, and just shove them in their mouth. Mindful eating is paying attention to what you are eating, how much you are eating, and how fast you are eating it. So with, with eating, we can practice mindfulness very effectively. Other forms are is, what are you feeling right now? what what's going on within your body what's going on within your mind are you paying attention to the person you're communicating with are you able to stop and look and quote smell the roses all of that is part of practicing mindfulness and when we can practice mindfulness we are only focusing on what is here right now and that can help us with our development of the will of our willpower want to build a support system whether it's a coach like me or another coach a mentor people friends but the support system supports you they don't criticize you for what you want to do so if you have a plan the support system will will ask you how are you going to get it what resources do you need when are you going to do it how are you going to hold yourself accountable all of this is part of building a great support system we we don't learn from our successes generally speaking we learn from our quote failures or our setbacks so when you attempt to do something and it doesn't succeed it doesn't mean it's failure you just got feedback that what you did didn't work so we want to change the way we look at our attempts in doing things as to it's not a failure it's just feedback and then what can we learn from that that's part of the challenge in mental strength right is challenge ourselves and regardless of the result we learn something from it to move forward a lot of people will just go up oh, i failed i didn't do good at this i didn't go they'll find all the things wrong that they did in an attempt to push themselves but they'll completely ignore what the learnings can come from that so that is a great thing and that part of a positive habit in the pm reflect on your day what worked what didn't what needs improvement prioritize your self-care if you don't take care of yourself you will not be able to develop any willpower whatsoever you'll be giving it away to everybody whether you wake up and you take care of everybody else first before yourself, you go to work, you take on more work besides doing yourself, you do things for friends, you're always giving. Not that that's a bad thing, but you need to take care of yourself first before you can give. You can't give what you don't have. And if you're exhausted, you can't give support, you can't give assistance, you can't give anything. So you have to prioritize your self-care, which is part of a healthy habit. And then celebrate the small wins. Like I said on just a few minutes ago, at the end of the day, this would be a great PM routine. What worked, what didn't, 
what needs improvement. The what worked are those small wins. And we want to keep identifying those to build up momentum to say, hey, I faced a challenge and I worked through it. That will help you build your willpower. So just keep in mind, right? Building willpower is a journey, not a destination, because we don't know exactly how much willpower we have. We think we know when we put ourselves, we come home exhausted, but we survived so we can do it again. So it's a journey. It really is a journey, not a destination. And this is why it's important to track at some level your progress to see how that journey is going. You know, embrace the process, embrace pushing yourself, embrace the feedback that things might not be working and embrace that, that process. And each step you take will contribute to the evolution of your inner warrior, right? We want to look at it and going, okay, I got this done. Now I, I need to improve it a little bit here. This didn't work. So I need to, tw to tweak it here. But then the process means taking action. So you got to continually take action to get feedback and correct and continue. And then remember, you have the innate capacity for extraordinary willpower. I mean, you have no idea how much willpower and mental strength you have. And you can unleash it and witness the transformation in your life when you just embrace that and go, hey, I'm going to be okay. This isn't going to kill me. I'm going to do this. And then when you survive, quote, survive or break through it, it's like, wow, I can do this. I can do anything. So if you like this podcast and want to see the show notes, you can visit warriormindcoach.com. There you'll find the show notes. You'll find other blog posts. You'll find other podcasts. Also, you'll find a way to get a hold of me for a breakthrough session. Since you'll be on the internet, please follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest under Warrior Mind Coach. <laughs>